Okay, welcome back. So we're going to see an example now with a data set that we are familiar with here. And we're going to find some percentiles. Okay, so we've got this data set. So we're going to find the percentile that your home state falls in. And then we're going to say, well, what if I, I want to live in the state that is in the 80th percentile? Okay, so let's look at the data over in Excel here. All right, so I've got the raw data. Now, the first thing I got to do to find a percentile is order this data. Okay, so I'm going to go to sort, and we're going to go largest to smallest. All right, so that way it'll give me the hottest first. And we notice Excel over here, we've got one, two, three, and so forth here. So you could use those as your rankings, just taking into account that your first row is the variable names. But sometimes I get confused doing it that way. So I'm just going to make another column over here called rank. All right, and all I got to do is just put one and two in there. And then I can drag it down and Excel will label all those ranks for me. All right, so we're looking to find the percentile of our, our home state. Mine happens to be Virginia. All right, so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to locate Virginia. Okay, so it is in the 39th position here. All right, so that tells me then if it's in the 39th position, there are 11 values less than Virginia. All right, so 11, 50 total states times 100, that means Virginia is in the 22nd percentile. So now let's answer the other question we had. Right, what if we wanted to find the state that corresponds to the 80th percentile? Right, so remember previously we were given a state and had to find its percentile. Right, now we want to find, we have given a percentile, we want to find what observation corresponds to that. Okay, so here, maybe you're you're thinking about moving and you're saying, okay, I can't stand it to be any hotter than, say, the 80th percentile. All right, so again, we'd have to order our data. And I'd have to go in and say, so k equal to 80. So I'd plug 80 in here, divide by 100, times 50, n is 50. So the 80th percentile, the state in the 80th percentile is going to be in the 40th position. Now remember what we need to do here is count from the bottom 40 states. All right, so let's look back at our, our data set. So here's our list. Now remember we said we needed to count from the bottom 40. All right, so you could count it manually however you wanted to do, but I think the easiest way is just do it like this again. So put one and two and just drag up until I get to 40. And boom, there we go. So Oregon is in the 40th position. In other words, the 80th percentile. So the next thing we want to look at, same data set. But now we're going to make our five number summary from there a box plot. And we're going to check for outlier. And we'll confirm this manually using the, the fence rule. Okay, so now to find your five number summary, again, you could find your median manually, you could find your quartiles manually, and that's fine. This isn't a huge data set, 50 observations wouldn't be the end of the world. But for a little bit larger data sets, we probably want to let a computer do this for us, and many tab can easily do it. So let's look at this data set over in many tab. Okay. So if I go to stat, basic statistics, display descriptives, I think we've been here before, click in my variable. And if I click on the statistics button, right, there's a default list of things that it's going to give me. So to get rid of those, I'm going to click none. But now if I want my five number summary, right, I have to click these in order that I want them. So minimum, Q1, median, Q3, maximum, OK. And there we go. 
So many tab keys mean on five number summary. Now the five number summary in itself isn't extremely exciting or or that useful. Right? It's a decent look at our data set. But remember it's important because from there our box plot is constructed. Alright, so to construct a box plot of this data in main tab, okay, I'm going to go to graph box plot. Just a simple box plot. Double click my variable. Okay, so at this point you'd, you'd be fine here. But one little thing that I like to do with box plots, when I click scale here, we've got some options. And I like to click this transpose button. It's because I just prefer horizontal box plots to vertical ones. So I'll show you what I mean here. I just prefer my box plots to be horizontal. I find them a little more useful. All right, so a couple things we can do with our box plot here. If I scroll over the box plot, it does give me my basically my five number summary here. But notice the difference in our five number summary and our box plot. All right, this is telling me my minimum is 100, Q1 110. That that all agrees with what we saw before. But notice our maximum was 134. This is telling me my, my upper whisker only extends to 128. All right, what's going on here? We've got a high outline. All right, remember we saw this on the dot plot and we said, hey, wait a minute, that sticks out. We saw it on the histogram and we weren't really sure. But now our box plot is telling us, okay, row 5, California, 134 degrees. All right, that is definitely an outline. So how did Minitab figure that out? Remember, it was used our fence rule there. Okay. So our minimum, right, using this five-number summary, our minimum is 100. Our Q1 is 110. Our Q3 is 118. Right, so that means your IQR is 8. So to check these fences manually, my lower fence would be Q1 minus 1.5 times 8, remember 8 is our IQR, and we got that from 118 minus 110, right? So that leaves my IQR of 8. So my lower fence is 198. My minimum was 100, so there's nothing less than 98. Right? But on the other hand, my upper fence, Q3, plus 1.5 times my IQR leaves me with 130. Remember my max it was 134, okay, which is definitely greater than 130. And so that tells us 134 is an outlier. Okay, so if we went and investigated it, we'd find that it actually wasn't a mistake. It really was that hot that day. So it's just an interesting observation, right? not necessarily a mistake. All right, so that's how we do all of that stuff, which mainly culminated here in identifying outliers. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.